Good evening, everyone. I'm LaToya Daldelberger, president of Groveport Madison Local Schools Board of Education. On behalf of the board, the board superintendent, J.B. Groob, and district treasurer, Felicia Drummy, I welcome you to the 2023 State of the School Celebration. You could do better than that. <laughs> We're back in the building now. Before getting into our introductions, I want to thank the Middle School Central 6th and 7th grade choir and the 6th through 8th grade band students for their outstanding performances this evening. Shout out to the parents, come on, that brought the children this evening. Shout out to you all as well. And we got our, super, our, our principal over here rooting on his crew, so thank you so much for that. I also want to thank uh, the Groveport Madison High School Jazz Band and the Devices Acapella Choir, excuse me, who performed earlier this evening in the gymnasium, and you should have heard them amazing. So round of applause for them as well. Thank you. We're going to be clapping a lot. <laughs> Performances such as these powerfully illustrate our students' abilities and teachers' critical role in taking students' natural talents and abilities and transforming them into well-honed skills that will forever positive, positively impact students' lives. I'm a music kid too, so music saved my life through school, so hands down to our music department. Thank you. All right, now it is my on honor to introduce and thank the other members of the Board of Education. Board Vice President Seth Bauer, And board members Libby Gray, Chris Snyder, he's in the back. Wave your hand, Chris. Wave your hand, Chris. He's in the back hiding. <laughs> and board member Kathleen Walsh. I appreciate my fellow board members' mutual commitment and that make the district, students, staff, and families their top priority and for the many hours they dedicate to the school district and community. Hands down, we literally just had a board meeting right before the State of the Schools and we made it on time to see our students, to support them, push them on and support our parents as well tonight. So kudos to the team for doing that as well. Each of us brings a host of talents, experiences and perspectives to the table. Now, while we don't always agree on every decision, we're committed to working together and wa walking away united in our position no matter the outcome. Now, since we're there, no matter your role, I want you to think about service and how your story should lead to your service. My very own story has led me to my service here, literally. Uh, when I returned from Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, my welcome home ceremony was here on this very land in the old high school. And it was very different for me when I found out that I was actually going to live here. So I was like, wow, this is full circle. Then to come back and serve. So I want us all to think about how our story should lead to our service. What examples are we showing for our children? Are we onward together or are we apart? Are we striving to make things better, having present solutions to our administration, hearing from our families, sharing that information with everyone so that way we can better our district? I want you to remember we need to be onward together. Look at our service. Make sure our service represents what we want our students to look like. They're watching us. I know I had a few minutes, so I wanted to share that with you all and make sure that your story leads to your service and that you serve well. And when you serve well, you serve well at all times. So now I wanna welcome our special guest, guest. We also have a large contingent of elected officials and community organizations that have come out this evening. I am so grateful for the many folks that have responded, um, that decided that they wanted to come out. I don't wanna miss anyone by name, but our mayor, um, council members, trustees, Ohio Department of Education officials, our local and regional officials, state reps, as well as our lo local judges. We thank you genuinely for joining us this evening that shows your part partnership and your vested support in Groveport Madison Local Schools and we personally thank you. 
I would also would like if we have any veterans in the room, and this is just I, I, I always do it everywhere I go. If you could please stand at this time, we need to show. Yes, thank you. I want to thank them for their service because the very reason why we're here is because of what they've done and they've sacrificed for us and they have shown their, their selfless service to our nation. Now I want to send a special thanks and welcome to all of our staff members. Um, so if they could wave their hand, if you're a Cruiser staff member from any of our schools or offices, please raise or wave your hand. I want to see you. None of this would be possible without you and your commitment to our students, their families, and the greater Groveport Madison community. So from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you to you all, the extra hours, the staying up late, coming in, um, all the great work that Mr. Warner and his team has done tonight. Thank you. I said it at the board meeting, but this is beautiful. Look forward to the food afterwards. I don't know about you. They always do a good throwdown with the food afterwards, so... Um, now, ev events such as the State of the Schools are an essential part to our commitment in keeping you and our community informed and engaged. So hopefully if you, if you see someone that's not next to you, that someone should be here, let them know we're live on YouTube, we're on Facebook, share that information so that they can tune in as well and hear it firsthand. In addition to the superintendents and treasurer's address, you'll happen here to learn a little bit more about our schools and various support services and a place to assist our students and staff. You should have just saw that display this afternoon in the cafeteria area with all of our vendors that were present, so thank them for being here as well. You can meet representatives from our local governmental agencies, community groups, and various partners who support school students and staff and the greater community. And you will want to check out our incredible talent of our students whose work is on display in the gymnasium. My daughter made a big deal about coming, and now I know why, because hers was up. So thank you all for your hard work. Now, you're probably saying, let's get on with the show here. So I want to welcome, so help me welcome our superintendent, Jamie Group, to the podium at this time. I know he's excited to spend a few moments in bringing you up to speed where we are and where we are going. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Dadelberger. Is the mic on? Okay, I, I couldn't hear myself for a second. Uh, while this is my first time presenting the State of Schools as Superintendent Groveport, many of you recognize me as I was a Deputy Superintendent for the district for the past four years. I took over the superintendency this past August, and it's my honor to serve you, our staff, and most importantly, our students. Okay, so uh, for the next three to four hours, I'm gonna give you a detailed outline of, <laughs> that's, that's a joke, we're just trying to bring you back in. Uh, no, I know there's, there's uh, artwork tonight, there's wonderful food tonight, and so we are gonna try to be uh, concise and direct and, and uh, share about our school. So um, Mrs. Drummond and I plan on covering four, four key topics tonight. We're gonna talk about student achievement, student and staff safety, our finances and financial position, and our current challenges and opportunities. In September 2022, the Ohio Department of Education released the newest version of the state report card, moving to a five-star rating system to represent various aspects of student performance and measures in the following components. Achievement, student progress, which used to be called value add, early literacy, gap closing, and graduation. The new star ranking system generally equates to earning three stars as meeting state standards, with five stars representing significantly exceeding state standards, and one star needing significant improvement. On this year's report card, we earned the following. Achievement, two stars. Student progress, five stars. Early literacy, two stars gap closing four stars, and graduation one star. I'll be candid. We're not where we want to be or where we're capable of being. 
COVID undoubtedly set us back, but I believe we have a solid plan in place to make steady and incremental improvements moving forward. We've struggled for some time with the achievement component. Among the area we're providing additional support is for our English as second language learners and students with disabilities. The district continues to do exceptionally well on student progress, which used to be called value added. Uh, that component measures how much students learn within a given year. This progress component is an excellent measure of our teachers' abilities and efforts to teach the material in the course of study and curriculum and students' ability to learn more than a year's worth of content. While we have significantly improved in closing the learning gap between various subgroup populations in English, language arts, and mathematics, our high mobility rate is one of our most significant challenges impacting our achievement. With families moving in and out of school, our school district, we're turning over about one-fifth of our students yearly. Another challenge impacting our K-3 reading scores is that nearly 80% of our kindergartners begin school behind where they should be based on their entrance assessments. To put that another way, our only slightly more than 20% of our kindergartners are ready for kindergarten when they walk through the door on the first day of school. One of our many steps we're taking to help our K-3 students is to partner with United Way of Central Ohio to recruit reading buddies. Volunteer readers come into our elementary schools one to two hours each week to read with one-to-one -one with our K-3 students. This is a fantastic program that we believe will yield tremendous, tremendously positive results. If you'd like to learn more about our Reading Buddies program or if you want to volunteer, please stop by the United Way of Central Ohio table in the lobby on the way out tonight. We've also launched partnerships with ETSS, the Columbus Literacy Council, always with us, and Eckerd Connections to provide free after-school programming for our students for more than 200 elementary and middle school age students. At the middle school level, we've also refocused our positive behavior intervention and support program. We're expanding our career technical exploration program and our partnership with the PASS Foundation, we're using the reading classroom six to eight to strengthen mathematics reasoning and problem solving. Insurance students graduate prepared for college, career, or military is the reason we're all here in the first place. We're working to ensure that students who want to go to college are fully prepared to do so, and those who wish to begin a career after graduation have attained the knowledge, skills, and experiences to prepare them to enter the job market. Our graduation rate dropped more than two points since the onset of COVID-19, which has required us to redouble our efforts to make sure that students are getting the support they need and that we have programs and services in place to ensure they graduate on time. We're retooling our Pathways programs and working closely with our Business Advisory Council to ensure that our programs are providing the skills students need to gain business credentials. We've also engaged Lead the Way and Columbus Helping Hands to provide one-on-one -on -one support and specific programming for our high schoolers. With respect to math this year, we introduced a new math curriculum in kindergarten through 12th grade, and we've had ongoing staff professional development to deepen our teachers' content knowledge and fidelity to the new program. Among the exciting new efforts this year, our high school counselors partner with the Ohio Building and Trades Association to sponsor trade expos for our sophomores and seniors. We held the, ver the first event this past November. Our sophomores participated in a field trip to meet with more than 25 businesses and trade associations to learn about apprenticeship programs and readily available high paying job opportunities. Our seniors will have a similar experience in May. We plan to continue this effort and expand as much as possible moving forward. If you're a parent with children in our schools, I also strongly encourage you to participate in parent-teacher conferences and talk to your child's principal or assistant principal about their improvement plans and the many initiatives we have going on already underway. The research is widespread and I've seen it myself as an educator for 30 years. If you're involved in your child's education as a partner with their teachers and their school, your child's opportunity for academic success grows exponentially. Okay, though ensuring our students' academic success is our central vision and mission, student and staff safety is our top concern. 
Neighborhoods and schools across the nation have been confronted with safety concerns that few of us might, have, might not have predicted 25 years ago. Too many children are dealing with personal traumas and adult situations which their adolescent brains are ill-prepared to manage. We've seen increased fights, bullying with social media, and other aggressions towards staff members not only in our high school and middle schools, but also our elementary age children. Weapons are available to youth in every community in the nation, including ours. We can't just simply suspend or expel our way out of this issue because the state law doesn't allow us to do that, and it doesn't address the core issue. Instead, we've hired security planning experts to work with us in developing and implementing a holistic approach to addressing safety concerns. We're focused on both inter internal, cultural, and safety issues, as well as issues such as potential intruders and even neighborhood crisis situations. Each Groveport Madison school has a safety plan drafted in coordination with the Groveport Police, Madison Township Police, and fire officials, as well as approved by the state of Ohio. We have a strong partnership with both police departments where they each provide a school resource officer to the district. We have trained school security staff members at the high school and one at each of our middle schools. We have threat assessment teams at each of our schools and we provide crisis prevention intervention training for key staff members. Each school has at least one counselor and social worker with the high school having five counselors. We also have seven school psychologists. Additionally, we have contracts with Concord Counseling, the Buckeye Ranch, and Nationwide Children's Hospital when making mental health referrals for students and families as necessary. Groveport Madison also has also partnered with the Ohio School Safety Center, which provides expertise and guidance on safety-related issues and a 24-hour tip line for reporting concerns. As you may know, we're currently evaluating weapons detection systems and other options that could include requiring students to use clear book bags, adding, um, adding safety and security staff, and options including weapon detecting support dogs. While there's been a great deal of attention on the high school, the safety of our students and staff at every level must be our collective focus. We also resumed our district safety committee, which includes students, parents, staff, law enforcement officials, and two of our Board of Education members. The committee had just begun work in the winter of 2020 when COVID forced the group into hiatus. They're now meeting monthly and we're delighted with the level of engagement and commitment the members have brought to the table. If you'd like to stop by our safety display later tonight, our Deputy Superintendent Paul Smathers will be on hand to answer questions and to share additional information. Among our continued challenges is overcrowding in aging schools. The number of students attending Groveport Madison schools has grown by more than 1,000 students in the past 10 years. The availability of reasonably priced ho homes is expected to continue and drive the district's enrollment growth for the foreseeable future. Overcrowding has an impact on students and staff alike. Many schools have converted storage areas, offices, conference rooms, and in some cases even hallways into classroom space. We've had to take over most of the school libraries, converting them into classrooms. Without the libraries, books and research materials are often stored in cabinets or on a rolling cart lining the hall. Overcrowding even impacts lunchtime for many students, with some students eating as early as 10.20 in the morning or as late as 1.30 p.m. There are also concerns about the impacts of overcrowding on student and staff safety. Crowded lunchrooms and hallways are also very noisy and have the unfortunate side effect of creating an atmosphere for potential altercations between students. Parking lots and public streets alongside schools are filled with cars, so much so that buses sometimes are unable to get into or out of the school's pickup and drop off area. In addition, the students whose classrooms are in module units must go outdoors to get into the main building and this is a particular concern when we have an emergency or lockdown situation. As far back as the late 1990s, the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission recommended replacing the district's elementary and middle schools. The Facilities Commission determined that the cost to renovate existing elementary and middle schools was expected to exceed two-thirds of the cost of new construction. 
the standard by which OFCC determines whether a building should be renovated or replaced. We hope that by this time next year, we'll have an updated facilities master plan in hand, and we invite widespread input from our stakeholders, including each of you, so please join us in the discussion and planning for these, for these resources. This is a community-wide concern, and it'll take a community-wide effort to address it. Before I wrap up our State of Schools update with what's next on the horizon, I want to ask our Treasurer, Mrs. Felicia Drummy, to provide a very brief update on our financial position. Um, Mrs. Drummy, do you want to come up and talk about the finances? This is our Treasurer, Felicia Drummy. Thank you, Jamie. It's my pleasure to share an overview of the district's financial picture with you this evening. I promise I won't take much of your time, but I think it's essential that the community can learn where the district's money comes from, how it is used, and our overall financial position. In this first slide, I want to highlight our various sources of revenue. As you can see, 46.5% of our general fund revenue comes from you through local taxes. 40.7% comes from the state of, of Ohio in the form of state aid. And 12.8% comes from miscellaneous sources, restricted state aid, tuition paid through the Ohio School Choice Program, and interest earnings. You may have noticed that the chart doesn't include any federal funds, and that's because we're focused on operations this evening, and federal funds aren't available for our operations. Instead, federal funds are restricted categorical grants that are earmarked for very limited allowable use, such as our Title I program. Knowing where the money comes from is important, but likely of more interest to you is where it's spent. In this slide, you can see the most significant percentage, 58.4%, was spent on district classroom instruction. This is necessary for teaching and supporting students. These expenses include instructional staff, classroom aids, curriculum, our curriculum instructional materials, and Chromebooks. Support services account for 38.3% of expenditures for direct student support for guidance services, health services, psychology, and therapy services. Additional support comes in the form of operations, transportation, instructional technology, administrative and financial supports, as well as maintenance. The combination of the remaining four categories equals 3.3% and covers contracted food service, extracurricular activities, miscellaneous charges, and facility improvements. With the last chart, I want to point out the great value our taxpayers are getting for their investment and how our residential and our agricultural millage rates compare to other area schools. As you can see, Groveport Madison's residential and agricultural millage rates are the second lowest of the 17 area school districts. It's essential for me to point out that when our industrial and commercial taxpayers receive an abatement from the city, an agreement is generally formed between the parties so that the school district is held harmless. Instead, we receive an annual payment in lieu of taxes from those businesses. When it comes to what residents pay, only Hamilton Township pays a lower millage rate than what is paid here in Groveport. One of the most important aspects of my job is the twice annual preparation of the five-year forecast. The forecast provides an overview, overview of the district's financial outlook based on data from the state, from the county, from grants, investments, and numerous other sources. 
the district is nearing the end of the 2019 five-year operating levy, which is set to expire next year, 2024. Even though our homes and other real estate values have increased over the past five years, the district's revenue has remained relatively flat. This is the result of House Bill 920 that rolls back millage rates to eliminate inflationary growth. While we have carefully managed our expenses over the years, we do anticipate being on the ballot for an operating levy this fall. The increased cost of goods and services due to inflation, the purchase of the bus fleet, and the anticipation that the state of Ohio will not yet fully fund the new funding formula are all factors that we cannot ignore and will have a tremendous impact on our current and future position. We promise to continue to monitor expenses carefully and we will look for additional savings and reductions while making every effort to minimize the impact of programming on students. As I wrap up, I want to share two important pieces of good news with you. First, I'm proud to report that the Groveport Madison Schools received the Auditor of State Award for its clean audit for the 2021 year, fiscal year. <laughs> Thank you. That is the second year in a row in which we've received this honor. This is quite an accomplishment, and it affirms that the district is accounting for the money you've entrusted to us in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and Ohio law. Most importantly, it illustrates that we have solid financial controls in place. Another positive effort I'd like to share with you is savings that saves you, our taxpayers, based on refinancing a portion of our 2014 school facilities construction and improvement bonds. The $9.2 million refinanced saved you, our taxpayers, $1.7 million. This is, yep. We were able to achieve this by reducing the interest rate from 4.55% down to 2.78%. We also were able to demonstrate to Moody's Investor Service that they should upgrade the district's credit rating. And I'm happy to share we did receive an upgrade from A2 to A1 on all of our general voted obligation bonds. And I think we all know the importance of a good credit rating and the positive message it sends lenders and others about your ability to manage your money. It's also of critical importance to schools and businesses that manage millions of dollars. Thank you for your time and attention. When you leave tonight, I hope that you feel more assured that we're doing our best to manage the resources you've provided us efficiently and effectively. We will continue to look for ways to save money while at the same time we promise to continue investing in people, programs, and services to ensure your children receive the best possible education. Thank you. Okay. We're not quite done, but um, I think it's important to wrap up tonight by telling you what you can expect from us over the next year and the years to come. Among one of the most exciting next steps in our academic improvement journey is creating our portrait of a cruiser. Some of you have probably heard of the term portrait of a graduate, and basically that's what we'll be doing, but we wanted to personalize it to our school community. A portrait of a graduate represents a school district's and community's vision for 21st century skills, character traits, and social emotional competencies that students need to succeed in college, career, and life. This process engages the school district and the broader community, educators, students, parents, elected officials, community members, and business leaders to help build a unifying collective vision of our children. We plan to launch this effort this summer, 
and I hope you'll be part of this essential endeavor for our students and community. To ensure that the Groveport Madison High School students are prepared for a college career uh, following graduation, we're working hard to ensure that our graduates have earned industry credentials and completed college courses and or advanced placement courses. Okay, so um, Mrs. Daldoberger mentioned that we um, had a board meeting tonight and one of the things we talked about there, we're sharing publicly for the first time that we are finalizing the process to purchase the former AEP building located immediately across the street from the high school, just north of the Madison Township Fire Station. This building will be used to house Cruiser Excel, an alternative pathway to college and career readiness for Groveport Madison High School students. Cruiser Excel is designed to meet the needs of students for whom the traditional high school pathway was not working or they were disengaged, distracted, or deficient in skills needed to succeed. It will enable us to expand and relocate our transportation compound as well, which has overgrown the space in the district service center. We're fortunate that we've been able to use some of the COVID relief funds we've received to purchase and renovate the building and parking lots. Lastly, I'm very excited to provide an update on our outstanding partnership developed with Primary One Health this past year. Recognizing the significant impact of healthcare has on our child's overall well-being and academic achievement, we've been working with Primary One to provide healthcare services to serve our students and to be available to all of you. Slated to open later this spring, and we'll have our ribbon cutting on June 8th, um, schools will have one of the only school-based health centers in Franklin County. Primary One Health practitioners will provide comprehensive health services, vision and dental services, health screenings, routine physical exams, sports and work physicals, immunizations and vaccines, and routine lab tests. They'll also have behavioral health services for students and families. We've built a space using a combination of state grants and our federal stimulus funds with Primary One Health covering inter interior fixtures and furnishing costs. The facility is located at the District Service Center and best of all, they will provide their services regardless of a family's ability to pay. I would like to thank uh, Primary One CEO, Charlita Tavares, CFO DeWitt Harrell, Chief Clinical Officer Dr. Jeffrey Marable, and the entire Primary One team for their partnership with this tremendous endeavor. We're so excited to see a positive impact this will bring to our students and the Groveport Madison community. As I bring our State of the Schools update to a close, I want you to know that earning and retaining your trust is very important to me and to our Board of Education. I can promise you that in every decision we make and action we take, we try to do so with the mindset of building respect and trust with our parents, community officials, our area businesses, our staff, and the greater Groveport Madison community. While we're certainly not without our challenges, we're here tonight to celebrate the students' many accomplishments and talents and the great work of our teachers, support staff, and administrators. When you leave the auditorium, please be sure to take a stroll through the gymnasium and you will be awed by the incredible student artwork being featured at the district's art show. There are also displays for each of our schools and many partner organizations located in the commons, and I guarantee you, you will not wanna miss on the delectable treats that are prepared and served by the students of Eastland Fairfield Career Center Culinary Arts Program. I wanna thank you for coming this evening. The Groveport, Comp the Groveport High School competition cheerleaders are gonna help us wrap things up by demonstrating their award-winning routine, followed by the Middle School North Band Program who will share some of their selections. Once again, it is my honor to having you join us and on behalf of the Board of Education, the administration of Groveport Madison Schools, thank you and have a wonderful evening.
that's a fact. Y'all should never mess with us. No way, no how. The game right now, gotta go now. Gotta give it all you got to the 12th round. Hit a scream from the crowd as they go loud. Let's go, let's get it up. Let's go, let's go, let's turn it up. Let's go, let's get it up. Let's go, let's go, let's turn it up. Who you reckon with?